In this video, we're going to show how easy it is to make renders look really complex, although it's actually super simple. So without any waste of time, let's create this particular wireframe. In our default scene, we're going to keep the default cube. We're going to click and drag from the junction of these two windows to create a new window. We're going to change this window from 3D viewport to the geometry node editor and press new to add in a new geometry node tree. And now again, we can delete our default cube by deleting the group input. Now we can press shift A and search for a cube and plugging the mesh into the geometry. Now, yes, the default cube was also a cube, but the useful part about this is that we get control over the sizes on the X, Y, and Z separately, as well as the ability to subdivide as much as we want. So let's go ahead and change the size to something like five on each of the axes, but reduce it down on the Z to something like two, and then increase the number of vertices to something like 50. Now to see what we're actually dealing with, we can search for a mesh to curve node and just plug that in and you can see how dense it currently is. So you can change the density according to what you want and what your PC can handle. But for now, I'll keep it like this and just search for a delete geometry node and then place that right here and everything gets deleted. So we're going to delete a random number of faces or vertices because it's currently set to point. You can change that to face as well if you want, but I'll leave it at point for now and just search for a color ramp as well as a noise texture. So the noise texture is what's going to be randomly deleting certain vertices. So we can plug the color ramp into the selection and nothing is going to be deleted or nothing is going to appear yet. To make things to start appearing, we have to click and drag the black in. So as we drag it in more and more, things start appearing. Apart from that, we can also play around with the scale of the noise texture to get it to clump in different regions. So I think this type of a clumping is good. Maybe I'll change the scale to one. However, I still want a few particles within these clumps to also get deleted. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and shift D to duplicate these two nodes and then press shift A and search for a mix node. And we can change this from float to color and plug this in here and this in here. Now we can go ahead and increase the scale of the second noise texture, maybe something like five. And instead of keeping this at mix, we can keep it to add and then plug the result into the selection and play around with the slider to delete more faces or vertices inside those clumps. So as you can see, if you bring the slider all the way in, all of it is just how it was. And if you just drag the slider out, extra faces start getting deleted. So you can delete a few faces, something like that is all right for me. And now I'm going to go ahead and search for an instance on points node and plug that in right here. Search for the cube and duplicate it and plug that into the instance. However, this time we don't need the vertices to be 50. So we'll keep the vertices at something low like 10 and we'll reduce the size to something like 0.1 so that they're fairly small and plug that into the instance. Now you have a ton of cubes being generated on those points. So again, I'm just going to reduce the vertices even more and again, do the same process of deleting geometry. So shift D, plug that in here, take the noise texture and color ramp, shift D, bring that in here, plug this into the selection and play around with the slider as well as the scale of the noise texture. Now, what I think I'm going to do is just reduce the vertices down here initially, decrease the Z scale as well. For the second cube, go ahead and increase the size so something like 0.35. And then again, just go ahead and delete a bunch of the geometry. And now on these, you can go ahead and do the exact same once again, probably for the last time. So shift D instance on points, search for a cube, shift D, and this time decrease the vertices even more down to two mesh goes into the instance and you can just reduce the scale a little bit. So maybe 0 0.01, 0 0.1 is what we're using. And again, delete a bunch of the geometry. So just shift D, bring that in here, take the noise texture color ramp, shift D and plug this into the selection. If you want to see what's taking the most amount of time, you can just go down here and check timings and you can see how much of time it takes for each of the operations to get executed. And I've plugged the noise texture and color ramp into the selection of the mesh to curve instead of the selection of the delete geometry. So there we have it. To randomize these much further, what you can do is for the instance on points for each of them, you can search for a random value node, set it from float to vector and plug this value into the scale. And that just helps randomize things even further. 
In fact, we don't need the delete geometry for the last option. Instead, we can go ahead and just randomize the value for our second instance on points as well. This time, make sure you use a random seed. and Maybe just increase the max values quite a bit. And there you have a fairly complex shape that's created very easily just using a few nodes. And it's the same thing repeated multiple times. Now we actually need to be able to see this. So we're going to search for a curve to mesh node and plug that in after the mesh to curve. So right here, and we need a profile curve. So we'll search for a curve circle. And remember, this might get really heavy on your laptop or PC. So before plugging this in, just reduce the resolution to something slightly smaller because we don't need the resolution to be that large and also change the radius to something really small. So 0 0.001 for now and plug that into the profile curve. Now you can switch off overlays and immediately you see the super complex mesh that you just created. Now you could go to any number of levels with this, but I think this is really cool. But for now, we'll start off with the actual texturing. So the first thing that we'll do is press Shift A and add in a light, point light, and we'll remove the default light. So just select it and press delete to delete it. Now our point light is present in the center, but to see it, we have to change our viewport shading to render. And we'll also set all of our render defaults. So switch on bloom, screen space reflections, and then go to our output properties, change our frame rate to 30 frames per second. Output is going to be 300 and change the output folder to wherever you want it to be. File format is going to be FFmpeg video. Encoding is going to be changed from Matroska to MPEG-4 and the output quality is going to be perceptually lossless. Now, with the point lamp selected, we can go to our light properties, change the color to something more interesting. Maybe we can have a red in the center and then just Shift D, Z, bring it up, change it back to white by reducing the saturation all the way to zero and increasing the radius quite a bit and hence increasing the power as well. That way, the outsides get lit as well and we have a red present in the inside. Now we can go to the world properties, just reduce the color even more so that it becomes almost black or black as well. And then select our geometry node object. And before the group output, just search for a set material node, plug that in and choose our default material. Then in the material properties over here, for the default material, we can go ahead and increase the metallic to something like 0 0.5 and that's actually all there is to it. You can see how complex the mesh looks in certain places and you get the different clumping. So it looks like somebody meticulously planned and created this, but essentially you could find a really cool angle. So something like this and then place your camera here. So to do that, just press control alt numpad zero and your camera gets snapped in. Then of course, switch on overlays, select your camera, switch them off, go to your viewport display, increase passport out all the way to one and then also reduce the focal length based on your liking. So I'm going to reduce the focal length to something like 25 and then just switch the transform to local and press GZ to zoom in and you get something like that. To exaggerate the red light, volumetrics becomes really useful. So we can go to our world properties and then change this from the geometry node to the shader editor and change it from object to world, press period to centralize the nodes and then just press shift A and search for a volume scatter node and plug that into the volume. After that, you can change the density to something really low like 0 0.2 or even 0 0.1. And you can select your point, which is the red light, go to the lamp, increase the power to maybe 20 and slightly increase the radius so that it's not too sharp in the center. Let's go with the radius of 0 0.25. So this itself can be rendered out as quite an awesome wallpaper. If you don't want that, another method of rendering out as was shown at the start is adding in another camera. So we'll press shift A camera and then control alt zero at some high angle like this and increasing the focal length to something like 100 so that it becomes completely flat. Now, before we do control alt zero, we want the previous camera to remain exactly where it is and we want the new camera to snap to where we are. So we're gonna have to go to view cameras and then set active object as camera. And now we can press zero to go out of the camera view and then control alt zero to snap it. Then increase the focal length of this new camera to something like 100, just so that it becomes a lot more flat. And then again, GZ to grab it and move it back or zoom out. So come to something like this and then add in an empty. So you can press shift A, empty plane axes, 
switch on overlay so that you can actually see it, maybe scale it up as well. Then select your new camera, control click the empty from the outliner, and then come here and press control P, set parent to object. And now you can animate the empty. So you can go back to frame zero and press I rotation, then go all the way to frame 300 and then press R Z 360 so that it rotates an entire rotation and press I rotation and then come down here, press T linear. And that way you get a looping animation that just goes through the complexities of this particular wireframe. Of course, you can light the top by increasing the power of this point lamp and things like that. And if you don't want this one to affect the volume, you can just reduce the volume all the way to zero and it still remains black and just play around till you're happy with what you get. And that's about it. The last thing left for you to do is press render animation. Hopefully you learned something useful from this particular tutorial and you can use it to just create really quick backgrounds and wallpapers for any reason that you may require such things. Until the next video comes out, which is definitely going to be tomorrow, don't forget to stay creative.